debating, you know, what does justice mean? You know, utilitarianism, because I studied philosophy up to A-levels, right? And I think it's a lot of bogus anyway. But I'm just telling you, right, that philosophy, they, everything that they say is all arbitrary. So who's right and wrong? So do you not think that the creator, after you establish that the guidance is from the creator, he would take guidance from him? Brilliant. I feel like personally, if I was raised in a Muslim country, I would. Oh, no, no, don't record, don't record, don't, don't record. No, 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 don't, no, no, the sister doesn't want to be recorded. Okay, only me, okay, fine. Is that all right with you? Oh. Yeah, I can see the drama. Yeah. Yeah, 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 don't worry. Ignore them, ignore them. So would you, so I, I, I completely understand where you're coming from, but if we can establish, if we can agree on one thing that you accept as the creator, right? So it would not make sense that the creator would just leave his creation alone without any guidance, right? That, so therefore, where, where you are at this moment in time is you're at a deistic position. That's where you are at the moment. Like you believe there's a higher power, but now you're in the search of, you know, did the creator, did he communicate? Did he communicate to his creation? So therefore, that's where the concept of prophets and messengers comes in. So we believe that Muslims believe that prophets and messengers were sent to every nation with one message to worship God alone and to follow the guidance that comes. So we believe in Adam, we believe in Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. All of them came with one message, which is to worship God alone and do not ascribe any partners with him. And whatever the revelation, whatever the guidance has come to you, you accept it. So at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, the Torah was given to him. For the Israelites, they have to follow the Torah. So they're Muslim. And Muslim by definition means someone who submits to the will of the one true creator while you worship him alone. And you do not associate any partners with him, right? So if you at the time of Moses, peace be upon him, and you verify that Moses is the messenger of God, and you follow the Torah, then you're a Muslim. If you were at the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, if you followed the revelation that was given to him, which is the Injil, the gospel, and you lived at the time of Jesus, and you believe he's a messenger of God, you're a Muslim. Now we say that the Quran is the last and final revelation given to the last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Because all the previous prophets, they were sent for their, for their people and for their own nation. But the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was sent for everyone. As the Quran mentions in Surah Anbiya, chapter 21, verse 107, We have sent you not, O Muhammad, except as a mercy to all the worlds. And there are many other evidence in the Quran, in Surah Araf, Surah 7, Ayah 158, in Surah Sabah, Surah 34, Ayah 28. I'm giving you the references so that I'm not making stuff up. You can check yourself, right? So the Prophet... No problem. But you should... No, no. This conversation, don't trust everything that I say. You have to verify everything that I have to say. Yeah? Because I can make mistakes, right? But what I'm telling you is what I, what I believe Islam is true. So that's the reason why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he came with proofs and evidence to prove he's a prophet. And one of the greatest miracles that he came, well, the greatest miracle he came with is the Quran, which is we believe is the revelation from Allah that was brought down by the angel Gabriel. And what's very unique about the Quran, about the, the greatest miracle that we claim, is that exactly it hasn't been changed. And number two, we can test it today. Now, the miracles of Jesus, peace be upon which we believe, the Quran mentioned in Surah Imran, Surah 3, Ayah 49, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he performed many miracles by God's permission. He, 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 uh, he, uh, he sealed the, the sick, he, um, he, um, raised the he raised the dead by God's permission, thank you. He raised the dead by God's permission, right? <laughs> so we believe he did this all by God's permission. However, the, all of these miracles are time bound. So you cannot go back in time to verify. But the Quran today, which you said correctly, is unchanged. So this lays out the foundation to test whether this Quran is a miracle or not. What's amazing is that, and I'm sorry for you know, taking your time, I really no, appreciate no, no, it. Right? Okay. Thank you very much, right? So 
the Quran. To speak as well, to speak. Yeah, 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 speak. Yeah, but listeners as well. We have to listen as well. Yeah, yeah. So the glorious Quran, which we believe to be from Allah, makes the claim that to produce a single chapter like it. So the Quran was revealed in 114 surahs. The challenge for the Arabs is to produce a single chapter like it, which we call the linguistic miracle. Now, you may not appreciate the Arabic language, that's absolutely fine. However, what's very, what's very profound is that if you look at the lifetime of the Prophet, peace be upon him, the non-Muslims, they wage a war against the Prophet. Now, I want to ask you this question. If there's a challenge that came to you, and I, for example, the Prophet Muhammad, he said, look, I'm, I claim to be a messenger from God, right? Try, try and produce a single chapter like it. You will try and meet the challenge, right? Why would you risk losing your life? So the Quran was ruled over 23 years, and yet there were more than 30 battles. Why would the non-Muslims, why would they rather choose to risk their own lives rather than taking upon the challenge? Do you know why? Because they knew deep down they could not meet the challenge. If I had the choice between meeting, for example, you put a challenge, and you say you will never be able to meet the challenge. So I would dedicate my whole life to try and meet that challenge. Why would I waste my time fighting you, losing my life? But the Quraysh, at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, they had to submit. This is not a word of a poet, neither is a soothsayer. And by the way, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was an ummi, he was uh, unlettered. He was not known to be a poet, he was not known to be a soothsayer. So do you know what they had to resort to? They said, this is magic. Because they had no naturalist explanation. So now, logically speaking, the, the non-Muslims, if, they, if they're very proficient in the Arab language, which they are, why would, didn't they dedicate their whole life just to meet the challenge of the Qur'an? But they choose to wage war against the Prophet. Secondly, the Qur'an mentions in chapter 4, verse 82, أَفَلَا يَتَدَبُّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ إِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوْ جِتِ فِي اِخْتَلَافَ الْكَثِيرَةِ Do they not consider the Qur'an with care? How do we from anyone besides Allah, they will find there are many contradictions. So Almighty God, you know, He's perfect. He will not contradict Himself. He will not, he will not make mistakes, right? If you look at, if you analyze other scriptures like the Bible, like the Hindu scriptures, there are many contradictions. But the Quran, over a period of 23 years, not a single contradiction. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gave many prophecies. Yeah, prophecies meaning the future events. Now, no human beings know what's going to happen in the future except he receives a revelation from God, right? So the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he said, a time will come when barefooted Arab Bedouins will compete each other in constructing two buildings. Now, what's very interesting is that this, this, this saying of the Prophet, he mentioned this more than 1,400 years ago. Now, there are two different types of Arabs. You have city Arabs, you have the Bedouin Arabs. The Prophet, peace be upon him, was not a Bedouin Arab. He was a city Arab, meaning that the, uh, he lived in, a, in Mecca, which is a, in Arabic is uh, Umm al-Qura. It's the mother of the centers, the mother of the towns, right? It was a public environment. What the Prophet is saying is not the city Arabs, the Bedouin Arabs, those who, you know, they just travel, you know, um, temporarily and then they move on. Where is the tallest building now? Where is the tallest building now? Dubai. Now, Dubai, I can show you a photo. 30 years ago, Dubai was just a barren land. Did you watch the, did you watch the photo? Yeah. So how did the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, how did you know this will happen more than 1,400 years ago? Unless he received this revelation from Almighty God. And there are many, many other prophecies. I don't want to bore you time, you know. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he, he also gave another prophecy. He said the time will come when women will come, their belly will be uh, torn into two, and whatever is, in their whatever is in their belly will be taken out out of the fear of being born. Now you have abortion. Now if you did this at the time of the Prophet, peace be upon him, you need medical surgery, by the way. You need medical tools. If you did that at the time of the Prophet, she would die. But the, but the Prophet said this will happen. So there are many, many of proofs. I don't want to bore you much of time. But think about it. Think about the message of Islam. The message of Islam is the oneness of God. Worship him alone. And follow the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad. I do agree with it. It's just a matter of like, I don't call myself. But do you believe that there's one God? Do you believe that he, is, he alone deserves to be worshipped? Yes. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Then you're a Muslim. Then you should take a shahada. You should take a shahada. Look, what, what happens is usually, usually what people are scared of is, oh, you, you have to make a dramatic change, you know, I have to start praying. 
slowly, slowly. You know, for example, you know, Rabbi Shamsi, mashallah, he gives a good example. You know, for example, you have a cake, a whole, like a huge cake, right? If you eat all at once, what's going to happen? If you eat all at once, the cake, what's going to happen to you? <laughs> You'll be sick, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, may Allah guide you. Yeah. Okay, now you give me the context. Okay, may Allah guide you. May Allah guide you. Sorry, can I just sorry, can I just can I just oh, yeah, yeah, with that? I'm only going to take two minutes of my time. If look, what happened is, what happened is, for example, you have a huge cake, right? If you eat all at once, you're going to become sick. But take one piece at a time. So for example, when you accept Islam, first of all, you're going to learn is prayer. Then slowly, slowly, you know, you're going to give up your bad habit. Look, I'm a Muslim. We're all Muslims. We all commit sins. Yeah. But that does not stop us from. But that does not. <laughs> but that does not stop us from. You know, striving to do good, striving to follow the Prophet, striving to follow the Quran. So, you're on a journey. It will be very slow. Take that step. For example, you're in a gym. You want to work out. I need to work out. <laughs> but for example, what's the first step that you need to do? You need to get into the gym first. For, don't worry about the routine, everything. Just get into the gym first. Similarly, Shahada. You, if you t if you say that there's none worthy to be worshipped except Allah, and Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and Jesus is the messenger of Allah, then you've already fulfilled the first pillar. Now you've got to fulfill the rest of the pillars. Salah five times a day, then fasting during the month of Ramadan. It comes very, very slowly. You're on your own journey. No one's perfect. So I recommend, so I would advise you to take your shahada. Can, can I say something really controversial? Like, I think my brothers might disagree with this one, yeah? I wouldn't get caught up with a lady. If you're already subscribing to certain goals and bad goals, that is aligned to a philosophy that perhaps we agree with, which is about yourself, I wouldn't get caught up with that. I've seen many people who profess to have themselves out of really far away from perhaps the things that you would agree with. And I've seen many people who don't agree with you. But that's where she's going to study the deen, inshallah. Because you know, because you know, you know, iman, iman is the belief, it's the conviction in the heart upon the statement of the tongue and action for the limbs. Yeah. I think that's where. I disagree with you. I disagree with you. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Hajj, Surah 22, Ayah 52, that call yourself as a Muslim. A Muslim, by definition, means you submit to the will of the one true God. And it comes, and therefore, you, therefore, you know, the first thing you have to submit is only one God deserves to be worshipped. Then, after you follow the legislation that the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him came with, salah, zakat, hajj, and there are six pillars of iman, six pillars of faith. You believe in Allah, you believe in His angels, you believe in the in His in His in His books, you believe in the in the messengers, you believe in the last day, and you believe in the predestination, the good and the bad. Now, if you believe all these six, and you believe in the five pillars of Islam, and you take shahada, you're a Muslim. So may Allah guide you. You know, I don't want to put so much pressure on your time. I only know, I, he just told me that you're together. So, you know, may Allah, may Allah guide you to Islam. And may Allah guide you. But yeah, thank you for taking your time. Don't want to take much of your time. Thank you. What's your name? What's your name? Evelina. Evelina, my name is Rahan. Nice to meet you. Take care. May Allah guide you. Thank you for taking much of your time. Thank you. 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 Yeah, do you have a copy of the Quran? I do, I can still. I can, I can. There's a copy of the Quran here. Shall I, shall I take, bring it over? Yeah, please, if you can. Barakallah, Fiqh. Zakhla, Fiqh. May Allah be with you.